imagine um, being able to make someone like you more just by copying their body language. Sounds like magic, right? Well, it's psychology. Welcome to the fascinating world of the mirroring effect. This psychological trick is all about subtly mimicking the other person's gestures, expressions, or speech patterns. It's a nonverbal way of saying, hey, we're on the same wavelength here, but uh, let's be clear, mirroring is not about impersonating. Don't go about copying someone's sneeze or hiccup. That's not mirroring. That's just weird and might earn you some strange looks. So keep it subtle, keep it natural. The mirroring effect works because it taps into our inherent desire for empathy and understanding. When someone mirrors our actions, it subconsciously signals that they're in tune with our feelings and thoughts. It's like a secret handshake for the subconscious mind, a way of saying, I get you. Now, you might be wondering, how can I use this in my daily life? It's simple. Let's say you're in a business meeting and you want to establish a rapport with your colleagues. You can subtly mirror their body language. If they lean in, you lean in. If they use certain phrases, you sprinkle those phrases into your conversation. But remember, subtlety is the key. You're not trying to be a parrot here. You're trying to establish a connection, a sense of understanding. And here's a funny thought. What if you're on a date and your partner has a habit of twirling their hair? Should you start twirling your hair too? Well, unless you want to come off as a hair obsessed weirdo, maybe not. Instead, try mirroring their posture, their tone of voice, or the rhythm of their speech. So next time, mirror their actions, not their sneezes, and watch as the mirroring effect helps you build better, stronger, and more empathetic connections with the people around you. Ever wondered why you can't forget that TV show cliffhanger? Nope, it's not because of the hot late actor. It's all thanks to the Zygarnik effect. Now you might be wondering, what on earth is the Zygarnik effect? Well, in the simplest of terms, it's that nagging feeling you get when something is left unfinished. It's like your brain's own version of a persistent parent reminding you to finish your chores. This phenomenon was first identified by a Russian psychologist named Bluma Zygernik, hence the fancy name. She noticed that uh, waiters could remember complex orders only until they were delivered. Once completed, the information vanished faster than a slice of cake at a birthday party. So what does this mean for us? Well, the Zygernik effect has a big impact on our memory and attention. Unfinished tasks stick in our minds much more than completed ones. It's like your brain is a stage and the unfinished tasks are those annoying performers who refuse to leave, hogging the limelight while the completed tasks are quietly shuffled off stage. Now, this is not just about remembering to finish your laundry or that report for work. The Zygarnik effect is used in all sorts of ways. Ever noticed how your favorite TV shows love to end on a cliffhanger? That's the Zygarnik effect in action, my friend. They leave you hanging so you just can't stop thinking about it. It can even be used to boost productivity. If you're struggling to start a task, just begin it. Your brain will latch on to the fact it's unfinished and keep nudging you to complete it. It's like tricking your brain into becoming your own personal productivity coach. But remember, while the Zygarnik effect can be a useful tool, it's also important to give your brain a break. We don't want those unfinished tasks turning into brain-hogging divas now, do we? So, um, the secret to remembering something, just don't finish it, like your laundry. Have you ever learned a new word and then heard it everywhere? 
no, the universe isn't stalking you. That's the bader meinhof phenomenon at work. Picture this. You're scrolling through a dictionary. Yes, some people still do that. And you come across a word you've never heard before. Let's say it's quokka. You learn that a quokka is a small marsupial from Australia that's often considered one of the happiest animals on earth. Fascinating, right? But then something strange happens. You switch on the TV and there's a documentary about quokkas. You're scrolling through social media and your friend from Australia has posted a selfie with a quokka. You're out shopping and you spot a kid wearing a quokka t-shirt. Suddenly it feels like quokkas have taken over the world. Welcome to the wonderful world of the bader meinhof phenomenon, also known as frequency illusion or recency illusion. This psychological phenomenon is your brain's way of spotlighting new information or experiences that were always there, but you just didn't notice before. Now, here's where it gets funny. Imagine if you've just learned about something absurd, like say a pink elephant, as suddenly you might start seeing pink elephants in commercials, in children's books, in garden gnome collections. You might even dream of a pink elephant parade. It's as if your brain has suddenly developed an obsession with pink elephants and is determined to point them out at every opportunity. But rest assured, you're not going mad. This is just your brain's way of making sense of the world and help you remember new information. It's a neat little trick, isn't it? So the next time you learn about pink elephants, don't be surprised when they start showing up everywhere. Um, want to persuade someone to do something? Start big, then go small. Sounds backward, right? Uh, welcome to the foot in the door technique. Now imagine this, um, you're at a party and you spot a friend across the room. You meander over and casually ask, hey, can I borrow your mansion for the weekend? They look at you stunned and after a hearty chuckle, they reply, you're hilarious, but seriously, what do you need? You respond, well, I was actually hoping to borrow that book you mentioned last week. Suddenly, lending a book seems like a cakewalk compared to lending out a mansion, right? That's the foot in the door technique at work. This technique, a classic in the world of persuasion, is all about starting with a large, often outrageous request, only to follow up with a smaller more reasonable one. The initial big ask makes the second smaller request appear trivial by comparison. And voila, you've got your foot in the door. But why does this work? Well, it's all about the human mind's need for consistency. Once we've said yes to something, even if it's a joke, we feel a kind of internal pressure to keep saying yes. It's like we've opened the floodgates of agreement and the yeses just keep flowing. Of course, it's worth noting that this technique isn't a magic wand. If your big ask is too outlandish, people might just think you're a bit bonkers. But when executed with charm and a dash of humor, it can be a surprisingly effective way to get what you want. So next time you're hankering for a favor, remember the foot in the door technique. Start with an ask that's as big as the sky, then follow up with something as small as a pebble. You might be surprised it's at how often you hear that delightful word, yes. So if you want someone to lend you a pencil, start by asking for their car. So there, there you have it for mind-blowing psychology tricks that you can use to navigate this crazy world. We've dipped our toes into the fascinating pool of psychology and discovered some truly surprising ways our minds work. We started with the mirroring effect that 
uh, nifty trick where um, copying someone's body language can make them warm up to you. It's like being a human chameleon, but instead of blending in, you're becoming irresistibly likable. Then there was the Zagarnik effect, the reason you're still wondering about that unresolved cliffhanger uh, from your favorite show. Yes, uh, your brain is a stickler for unfinished business. It just loves to remember incomplete tasks better than completed ones. So next time you forget where you left your keys, just try leaving the task of finding them unfinished. We also talked about the bader meinhof phenomenon, that uncanny experience when you learn something new and then it seems to pop up everywhere. It's like the universe is saying, hey, I see you learned a new word. Let me use it in every conversation you have today. And lastly, we explored the foot in the door technique. This is the sneaky strategy where someone is more likely to agree to a small request um, after saying yes to a larger one. It's like your mind saying, well, I've already agreed to help move a fridge, so I guess I can help move a pencil too. Now, isn't the human mind a fascinating thing? Full of quirks, oddities, and wonderfully weird mechanisms. Remember, understanding these tricks can give you a unique insight into human behavior and even help you influence it. But use this knowledge wisely or, you know, just use it to get someone to pass you a pencil. Thanks for watching. And remember, use these powers wisely or just to get a pencil. Don't forget to subscribe for more mind-blowing psychology.